Bravo from CBS News, and today we have a special exclusive on Mr. Jeffrey Wigand. Thanks for coming on our show today, Mr. Wigand. Pleasure to be here. Would you mind giving us a little background on yourself, such as your date of birth and where you grew up? I was born in Bronx, New York on December 17, 1942. I joined military and did short stint in Vietnam. I went on to get my master's and PhD from University of New York at Buffalo. I work at some other firms including Pittsburgh and J&J, and &J, General Motors and Union Carbide before landing my job at Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corp. Would you tell us what your occupation was and the position you held? I was former vice president of research and development at Brown and Williamson in Lewisville, Kentucky. Brown and Williamson is owned by BAT Industries. Pick the world's second largest tobacco concern. What exactly did you specialize in? I worked on the development of reduced harm cigarettes, and I was also an expert witness and consultant for various tobacco issues. What benefit did you personally receive? Well, I devoted the time to my nonprofit organization, Smoke Free Kids Incorporated, in an attempt to help children of all ages make better decisions and healthy choices regarding tobacco use. What did you do to become nationally recognized? I became nationally known as a whistleblower regarding Brown and Williams on the addiction of cardinogenic addictive additive to their cigarettes. Because I did this, I received multiple death threats and consequently was assigned bodyguards, which CBS paid for. Would you tell our audience what exactly is nicotine and why is the impact so important? Nicotine is a naturally occurring substance in tobacco. That is why I'm responsible for the addictive habit forming effects of cigarette smoking. Now, my company was intentionally manipulating the tobacco blend to increase the nicotine levels in cigarette smoke, thereby increasing the impact on the smoker. And why were you fired, Mr. Wagon? I was fired because I blew the whistle on a nicotine practice and because I exposed the fact that high-ranking officials within the company were aware of this practice and knowingly approved it. I was going to come forth anonymously, but Mike Wallace and Lord Bergman convinced me of the importance and the rest is history. Who filed that lawsuit against you? And why? The lawsuit was filed against me by Brown and Williamson because of my exposure to the public of the company and the industry's efforts with regard to the nicotine practice and their blatant disregard for the health and safety to the general public. Why did you decide to come forward and become a whistleblower? I became a whistleblower to make the American public aware that Brown and Williamson manipulated the nicotine mixture by enhancing its effects by adding dangerous additives like ammonia into the cigarettes. This technology, known as ammonia chemistry, allows for nicotine to be more rapidly absorbed into the lungs and therefore affecting the brain of me nervous system. More seriously, it's a health problem. And we'll be back after the break. Smoking causes mouth cancer. If it didn't, I wouldn't be needing radiotherapy and chemotherapy. If looking at mouth cancer on your cigarettes makes you uncomfortable, look at another part of the pack. Quitting is hard. Not quitting is harder. What was the settlement in this case? In fact, the lawsuit was dismissed as a condition of the June 20th, 1977 historic $368 million settlement between the Attorney General of the Ford States in the tobacco industry. As part of the settlement, I was free to inform the public about all the known dangers of smoking. The settlement money, $368 billion, would be spent by the states to treat the diseases caused by smoking. What other issues have you spearheaded since this settlement? Since then, I have spearheaded effects to ban smoking in public places. Due to the inherent danger in secondary smoke inhalation, I tried to go 
state to state and establish smoke free zones in public buildings, restaurants, and bars. I've even gone as far as to make certain states smoke free, like Delaware, Florida, Maine, Connecticut, and Massachusetts, and Rhode Island. And the list is still growing. I've heard that you've taken your efforts overseas and across the border. Tell us a little bit about that. My efforts have had a far-reaching effect insofar as legislators in Sweden, Norway, and New Zealand have now outlawed smoking in public buildings. In Canada, they have even put graphic warnings on the cigarette packages and have doubled the price of cigarettes and banned cigarette advertising altogether. Rumors abound with regard to states squandering their portions of the settlement money. How so? I'm disappointed, I think, because most of the states are squandering the millions of dollars that they help them win. Only a handful of states have used the money to discourage kids from smoking. It's a moral outrage. Hollywood made a movie based on this case. What's the name and who portrays you? Money from the non paying non non movie, which focuses on the case, is entitled the Insider! I am portrayed by Russell Crowe! It also starred Al Pacino and Christopher Plummer! Did you get paid for all these efforts to make kids and adults aware of the harmful effects of smoking and or nicotine? Well, as VP for Brown and Williamson, I earned $300,000 per year working for tobacco. Now, I only make 60000 working against it. The stress of the whole case led to my divorce, but I am vehemently against smoking, and even though I make less money, every day I know I've done something that makes a difference for another human being, and that makes you feel good. Well, you heard it yourself, folks, and this has been a live report from CBS Atlanta News. Glad to have you, Mr. Wygand. Not a problem whatsoever, madam.